Today's featured artist is Natalie Del Carmen. Hello. <laughs> and we're going to sing a little for you. But before we did that, I wanted to invite you to visit our social media. I want to start with Natalie. Absolutely. So I'd say I'm most active on Instagram at natalie.del.carmen. And my SoundCloud is just Natalie Del Carmen. And my YouTube as well is the same link. Awesome. You? And you can find me at AnnetteAdlerMusic.com or Annette Adler Music on Facebook and Instagram. And I have a new album out on Spotify called Color My World. It's amazing. Oh, see? You should go listen to it. This is why I invited her. So <laughs> Natalie, I wanted to begin by singing straight away so you can get the sense of how awesome Natalie is. And um, there's a song we were going to sing that you wrote. Yes. Called? It's called California Living. Um, I'm 19 now, but I wrote it when I was about 14 or 15, and it's kind of one of those songs that I always just go back to. I feel like it's just a melody I like, and it like reminds me of like that time in my life, so I thought that we would record that for you guys. Wonderful. Let's get started. Awesome. Okay. This ain't the best day for me I'm just not going insane Cried a couple times already I wanted something more than what was in my head What makes me happy would understand me up every time so pardon my manners I'm, I'm no fool I just don't know what I'm doing California living baby it ain't for me ooh, 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 ooh. I'm not for complaining Please don't worry about me, darling A thousand miles I'm dreaming I'll find my happy place where I'll be free For now I've given up Life goes to mess me <laughs> the first question I have is, do you usually tell people what your songs are about? Um, if you know me really well, you don't question it. So like when my mom listens to my stuff, I have a feeling she like knows what it's about because yeah. I tend to tell her stuff in my life or like close friends. But I try not to add too much detail because then I also feel like that takes away from someone else listening to it and relating to it. If it's just so specific, it's like, I can't relate to this at all. So I think it's important to like draw it into your own life, but also 
make it so people don't really know what it's about, but get the basic idea of it, right. but not really how it connects. Really I've really run cool. into that, though. People are like, yeah. so what's that about? And I'm like, ooh, ooh. <laughs> not sure I want to tell you, but. particularly you. <laughs> you know? Exactly. You talk to the out. people that they're about. Exactly. That's kind of tricky. It is. So I was interested you in your take on, on that. Yeah, you got to be careful. And is there ever a song that you won't write because it's too personal? I'll write it, and I'll never put it out. Okay. And then if someone wants to hear it or I really like it, I'll be like, you know the situation. What do you think of the song? And they always say like, it's great, but don't release this. And I'm like, yeah, <laughs> okay. I know. So there's a I few, do write them. Yeah, that's interesting. There's a few I'm like, ooh, I better not write that one. <laughs> yeah, no, I got to. Okay, so when I met Natalie, she was in elementary school. <laughs> But when I really got to know Natalie was in fifth grade when okay. I was teaching music for yes. a little while. And were you already writing songs then? Um, I started on the piano with like lessons, so I don't think by fifth grade I was really like I didn't I didn't start writing until I was trying guitar out. And so I think I started writing maybe about like end of sixth grade. Okay. Seventh grade. So okay. elementary school was just like getting into it, I think. Okay. Yeah. Cause I thought, did I miss out on that? <laughs> No, definitely not. The beginning songs were, you weren't missing out on, <laughs> on anything. <laughs> and what made you start writing songs? Um, I feel like this is a generic answer for a lot of girls, but Taylor Swift. Literally. Oh. Yeah, I love Taylor I Swift. I love Taylor Swift. I do. And it's like her old stuff, it's just like, once I started guitar, it kind of just came to me. I feel like it's a lot easier to write on guitar than it is piano, and so it all just kind of... Right. Started, I guess, from that. Right. Yeah. When I was teaching ukulele to the little kids, yeah. I was like, you need four chords in a poem. And that's it. <laughs> so and you got it. How would you say has been the biggest influence on your career besides Taylor Swift, on helping you pursue your career? Oh, man. I think probably all of high school, I knew I like really, really liked folk music or like singer songwriter stuff. So I think the Lumineers are probably number one. Oh. It's changed now, but I would say like to know I wanted to do music and like what I like wanted to say in music, it was definitely that group. I love Vance Joy as well. And then these days it's kind of been all over the place. I like a lot of like small artists that um, lyrically are really good. And then I've kind of liked a lot of production artists. So. Um, one is Adam Melcher, which is like, he's amazing. If you guys don't know who he is, you should check out his song, um, 30 Minutes. Mm, Very good. Okay. Yeah, you, you would like him a lot. Okay. So a lot of smaller artists now that just aren't as popular and like have a lot to say. I think that keeps things going for me. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then um, how do you find the inspiration for your songs? My own life. Okay. If, it, if there's like, I was talking to her earlier, if there's nothing really going on in life, I either try to write about someone else, but even then it's like hard to connect with that if you've never gone through it yourself. But I think that's why I'm grateful when like, even if it's like no one wants to have problems in their lives, obviously, but I think when I do get hit with stuff and you get through it, it's like, oh, I can write a song about this. And like, that's what I do with problems. So it's just, it's a good thing. I have think. you written any COVID songs? Like related to that topic specifically? Yeah. No, I don't. Maybe like I like hinted to it, but like you wouldn't say, you wouldn't guess that that's this time. I wouldn't think, but right. have you? Um, yeah, actually. I've oh heard really? A few, yeah, I've nice. had a few. I'm like, I'm treating COVID like the bad boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> All my songs are about the bad. So I'm writing some terrible like I hate you songs of COVID. Oh, yeah, well, pretty good. We all hate it, so it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> so there it is. Yeah. What is your biggest career dream? Singer songwriter not a, like a huge artist but like to be, have the ability to tour but make money off of it obviously and just like play music for people and travel and stuff but i think if that wasn't something to work out and if i had different life plans i would love to just write on a label honestly for like an artist or just work with different people every single day and give music for somebody else to perform i would be anything that has to do with writing really i'm really into right yeah that's, that's wonderful and yeah and then what, okay, so Natalie goes to the Berkeley School of Music. I do. And what has been the most helpful thing from the school that's helped your songwriting? Every, I would say, unlike a lot of colleges, almost every single professor there is very, very into their job and they want the best for you and they want to give you that advice. So every person you meet, there's obviously like bad teachers and whatnot, but most people I've talked to it's they will help you outside of school of what you, what your individual goals are 
So like a songwriting teacher, if I went to him after school and said, I'm working on this song, he'd be like, come in, we'll work on it. So I think it's just, everyone's very supportive. And I think that like the stigma that like you're surrounded by a lot of music kids and they're all like cutthroat with each other. It's not really true, honestly. It kind of depends who you're hanging around with, but everyone is extremely supportive. So it inspires you to do better. So I think that's the best thing about going to college with like so many people. I'm so envious. <laughs> when is your first EP gonna come out? So I've been like self-recording stuff for a long time and putting it on SoundCloud and I've kind of just put off the production aspect of things and I've just always just been the writer and that's just kind of what I've done and I've always had plans to and recently I have a couple friends that have started like a little production company and they've like reached out to me and asked if I'd want to work with them and record something. So that's being set up um, yes. in the recent weeks. The answer is yes? The answer is yes. Okay. And so <laughs> yes, I'm recording one song right now which I hope to put out. I want to start small just put something out for real and then build off on that. So that's yes, smart. the answer is yes. Okay, that's wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> right. Thank you for visiting with us today while I interviewed Natalie Del Carmen and I got to sing Annette's duet with one of my favorite people <laughs> it ever. Was it was great. Thank you for having me. Natalie Del Carmen, if I had a label, I would sign you. <laughs> Thank you so much. That means a lot. Thank you so much. Thank you for stopping by. I hope to see you next time.